We're very pleased to welcome Shell's wonderful world of golf back to Canada. As a junior golfer, I remember watching George Knudsen and Stan Leonard shooting 66s at the beautiful Capilano Golf Club in West Vancouver. <laughs> Shell's wonderful world of golf made a big impression. The tradition is going to continue with two of the most popular and powerful golfers on tour. We have a two-time U.S. Open champion from South Africa challenging a Masters champion from the United States being contested on Canadian soil. Ernie, you're pretty laid back, but uh, with this international competition, you've got to be getting excited about this today. Well, I'm playing a guy that can play this game pretty well, so <laughs> I'll have to go out there and, and play some decent golf today. Um, you know, I came around the golf course yesterday, I think it's in great shape. Uh, it's beautiful out here, so hopefully the rain stays away and we can play some decent stuff. Well, good luck to you. Freddie, 3-0, and a perfect record. You've taken down Greg, Raymond, and uh, Tom Watson. <laughs> You've the got, bigger they are, the harder they fall. You, you, <laughs> you got a difficult challenge today. Well, What's it going to take to take them down? You know, I, I think uh, I've played here, which should help a little bit. For Ernie, uh, he's, he's a good buddy and a great friend, and uh, we're going to have a good day. I, I think what you can do here is make a big mistake, and I'm going to try not to. I'm going to just try and stay with him and then maybe handle him the last couple holes. No, we're going to have a lot of fun today. All right, Rich. Today's format is 18-hole stroke play, played under the rules of the United States Golf Association. It is my pleasure to introduce today's referee, Mr. Will Nicholson, Chairman of the Competition Committee of the Masters. Good morning, Richard. How are you this morning? Fine, thank you. Ready? Well, Hi, Ernie. Good morning, Matt. Ernie, you're the uh, you're the visitor to this co this continent. Uh, you call it that's head on the Canadian coin, that's tails on the Canadian okay, coin. Okay, okay, it's the tail. <laughs> head. All right. Your your play. Okay. Thanks. Paul. Play away, please. Good. Good luck, partner. All right, mate. All right. Good luck, okay. Okay. All right. The first hole at Nicholas North. Richard, let's take a look at it. It's a 390-yard par four, and the players are typically going to take a three-wood off the tee. It's a very generous driving hole, and they're going to have a short iron in, possibly a nine iron or a pitching wedge. They're going to drive in the area around this area right here, and they'll leave them an open shot to uh, a green that is protected with one bunker. The whole location is pretty easy. It's going to be right in the middle of the green. Ernie Els first on the tee. Ernie's got a three wood. Simple shot down the middle of the fairway, which he has pulled to the, into the trees to the left. That's not the start that he wanted. Not very auspicious for Ernie, no. What's in there? Has it? Now Freddie Couples. Fred's got a three wood on the tee. Fred's got the advantage that he's played this golf course in the Canadian Skins game before, so he knows what this course plays like. Shot. Push it. Nice. Perfect. Huh? Smooth as you'd think it would be. Course architect Jack Nicholas. 6,908 yards, par 72, opened in 1996. The tees and greens are bent. The fairway's blue, and it'll cost you $125 in United States money for a greens fee. Winner today gets $100,000, the runner-up $50,000. In case of a tie, they will split. And now Ernie from the trees. Ernie's going to be punching a 7-iron. He's got a tough shot. He doesn't want to fly it over this bunker. The best play is to put it in the bunker where he can increase the chance for a par. Supposed to hit a little lower than that. Run it. Now Freddie second. Freddie with a pitching wedge. He wants to establish a good solid play in the first few holes. Don't look for him to be too aggressive on the shot, but just a solid shot to the middle of the green. Yeah, nicely done. third shot now believe it or not this is the easiest place to make par from he can spin the ball professional golfers love the bunker great shot well, you shot, read his mind very beautifully there Richard well it's it's well managed yeah, Ernie hit it in trouble off the tee the best place to put it was the bunker now Freddie for birdie 20 feet now these greens looking at them are faster than I've ever seen them Break. Oh. 
bottom. And what we're going to see is guys are going to they're going to start to get they want to get the feel of them. They're not going to be so aggressive with their putting at the start. They got to get the pace of the greens before they can be aggressive. Now Ernie for par. Well, good putt. Nice good. par. Well managed with a bad tee shot. Very professional. And a par for Fred Couples. Wow. Pretty nice. These greens huh? are good, huh? <laughs> and at the end of the first hole, both players at even par. Welcome back to Nicholas North. We're at the second hole. The second hole is a, can be a very tricky hole. Uh, 202 yards with the pin tucked five yards from the right side. So the risk is there. If you want to take the risk, you can go with the pin. If not, go with the middle of the green. An aggressive shot by Ernie. Right over the pin. Ernie's Ooh. demeanor doesn't good seem shot. to change Best. whether it's a good oh, shot or a bad shot, does it? We had a chance to talk with Ernie about his opponent today, Freddie Couples. Well, Fred Couples has got a very unique uh, golf swing. Uh, it's very natural. Um, I don't think you can really copy that swing. You know, it's, it's, it's very unique. It's got the best, best rhythm in, in the game of golf at the moment. And uh, I think people will, will agree with me when I say that he's got probably one of the prettiest golf swings. You know, he's a, he's a force in, in any golf tournament right now. And, you know, he's a pretty laid back character too. So we might have a good time out there. So Freddie safely on the green. Both players got pars there with two putts. And at the end of two holes, the score remains the same. As we move now to the third hole, and let's take a look at that, Richard. The third hole is a 498-yard par five. The prevailing wind will be coming between those mountains. The players will drive in this area right here with the length that Freddie and Ernie have. They'll definitely be able to hit this green in two. The unique feature of this hole is the double green with the 12th hole. The third hole location will be nine yards from the left. Players have hit their tee shots, and here's Freddie with his second. 205 yards with a five iron. I don't believe Fred's going to be going at this pin. Look for this ball to be at the middle of the green. Yeah. Great ball. Puck. Great ball. Puck. Yeah. Where is that? Sure. Fred? Uh, so far, a little conservative play. You're just getting the feel of uh, the course and the greens? Yeah, the greens are awesome, Rich. Uh, I don't know if you can get any better. And then so far, it's a little cold, and you know it's hard to hit perfect shots. But we're doing all right. And you able to keep loose? Yeah, mm. yeah. I think Ernie and I both have uh, had our back fills the last few months, and we're doing fine. And it should be a good day. But birdies are going to be tough, especially. Oh, it's a par five. But if the pins are like this, we'll have a tough time out here. Well, you can two putt this one for birdie. All right, Richard. We'll talk to you later. Ernie drove it in the bunker off his tee shot and hit, played a poor second shot to here. As you can see, the ball is out of the bunker. His feet are below. He's got a very difficult shot, and he's going right at the pin with a very difficult shot. Great shot by Ernie. Very makeable putt for a birdie here for Ernie Els as Freddie Couples now gets ready for an eagle putt. 60 feet. Freddie is thinking nothing but speed here. He wants to make sure he doesn't have work left over for his second putt. Get up. I spot a cousin. Now else for birdie. 14 feet. He knows that birdie, uh, Freddie's going to have his birdie in his pocket. Pretty solid yes. right there. Yes. Yes, baby. Very nice. A birdie for Ernie Els. Fred Couples converted his for a birdie, so at the end of three holes, they're still all even. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf, coming to you from British Columbia, whose majestic scenery is as riveting as the golf of our two players. We've come now to the fourth hole at Nicholas North. The fourth hole is a particularly strong par four. Ernie's got a driver in his hands, and what he's faced with 
is having to hit this fairway. The, there's a bunker out there. He can either fly it over, or if he wants to hit the middle Beautiful. of the fairway, nice. stay left of the bunker. As in, absolutely. That's, that's nice. exactly nice. what he does. Beautifully in the middle. Hmm? Perfect shot. Is that okay, Joe? <laughs> Freddie's making reference to Joe LaCava, his caddy and, uh, and friend. Now, Freddie. Again, Freddie's got driver in his hand. He wants to put this thing in the fairway. Beauty. Thank you. Get left. Well, it listened to Freddie saying get left okay. just over that bunker and into the fairway. Both players in excellent position on this long par four. Fred, uh, there's a lot of people that love to know what Fred Couples does <laughs> when he's not playing golf. Uh, you know, I certainly everyone knows I enjoy being around the house. Um, I like to work in the yard. Uh, you know, do most most what everyone else does on the weekends when they feel like relaxing. I do it almost every day when I'm home to relax. And what do you grow in the yard? Uh, well, Thais has her herb gardens and everything, and she cooks all kinds of teas and stuff, or cooks, uh, grows, and I chop everything down. Mm -hmm. the trees and shrubs, and I pile them in a corner, and then hopefully the gardeners will take care of them. I'm great at trimming stuff, but I'm bad at throwing it away. How about cooking? Never have cooked a meal in my life, so <laughs> that's one thing, you know, which would be a great thing to do. I have nothing but time. But I, I really like, you know, we have a few friends come over, and we hang out and just relax, stay at home. Sounds good. Yeah, Thank it's you. easy. Okay, Rich. Well, talk about relaxed. Both of these fellas seem relaxed all the time. Here's Freddie now, second shot. 158 yards with an eight iron. Good shot. Good solid shot. Now, Ernie. Ernie's got 141 yards. He's hitting a nine iron. How about those two shots? Huh? And this one's still moving. Yeah, look at it go. This is an indication on how fast these greens are, Jack. They're running about 11 or 12 on the stint meter. Well, there's two very makeable putts here. There's no doubt about it. Oh. oh. God. That putt could have gone in just as easily as missed. So par for Fred. That's Ed McLaughlin, the manager of Nicholas North in the gallery. Ernie for birdie. Looks as though it's going to break a little left to right. Well, two missed opportunities here for our players. Ernie said he didn't hit it. He wanted to be have a little more pace so it would track right into the middle of the hole before taking that break. And so at the end of four holes, both players remain at one under par. Well, Richard, both players seem to be on their game. Well, they want to establish a good, solid uh, ball striking and putting. These greens are fast, and they don't want to hit any three putts early. So, uh, so they've got, they've established that, and they bared down on the fourth hole. They almost made those birdie putts. Well, two great shots coming in there, too. We're at the fifth hole now. Both players have already hit their drives. They're in the fairway. Let's take a look at this fifth hole at Nicholas North. Hole number five, a 416-yard par four. The players will be hitting three woods off the tee to protect from going through the fairway towards the water. You'll have short irons. The two bunkers on the left side will protect the shots. The pin will be tucked right over that bunker, making a second shot very challenging. Ready, couple, second shot here now. 121 yards, a pitching wedge in his hand. A lot of room behind this hole. He'll be flying it right behind this hole and spinning it back. Thank you. Too far though. None. Thanks. Ernie's got 119 yards, a pitching wedge in his hand. Oh, yeah. 
Great shot. Yeah. Now Freddie. 20 footer downhill. It's a fast putt. Looks pretty good. And it puts the brakes on. Two very interested onlookers here. On the left is Liesl Vehmeyer, soon to be Mrs. Ernie Els. And with her, Tyus Bren, now known as Mrs. Freddie Couples. 8 feet for birdie. Oh. Pull it. And so, another opportunity slipping away and they remain at one under par after 5 holes. And we have come now to the 6th hole. Ernie's on the tee, 181 yards. Ernie's chosen a 6 iron. Gotta watch that bunker behind the pin. Go. Good shot. Great shot. Thank you. Uh, little fit. What do we got, Joey? 81 total. You like six? Yeah. Freddie's discussing with Joe LaCava as to what he said. He's chosen a six iron as well. Looks to be the same shot. Keep an eye on you. Oh. That was fatter. Freddie talking about Ernie's shot hitting it fat, and his shot was just a little fatter, he says. And comes up a little short. Mm -hmm. Well, Freddie two putted for his par, and now Ernie Ells has yet another chance to take the lead here with his birdie attempt. He's coming up this rise. It doesn't, it's not an easy putt. Turn. Well, he didn't get the break that he wanted. So par for both the players here at the par 3-6 hole, and they still remain tied at one under. We move now to the seventh, Richard. A 366 par four. As you can see, the trouble is on the right side with the bunkers. It's not a long hole, so three wood will work. You'll have a short iron in with the three wood, or you can take driver and take it down the left side and open up the angle to the green. The whole location is eight yards from the edge of the green. Ernie Ellis has the tee. He's elected to hit driver. He's going to force the issue. He wants to establish a good shot on this hole. A bad bounce. The good thing here, Jack, he's not in the bunker, but it's not the angle he wants to come in at. Mm -hmm. Freddie with the driver, too. I'm a little shocked by this, taking driver on this hole. <laughs> a beautiful tee shot. Go. Here you go. Perfect for Freddie. <laughs> Yeah, we see that, Joey. This looks nice, man. You know, it's good, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Ernie will borrow it for his next tee shot. Or maybe he's putting the hex on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie's got 113 yards. He's got a pitching wedge. This shot will be made a little easier because the wind is into his face. Mm. Shot. Yeah. Oh, yes. Great shot. Yes. Another birdie attempt for Ernie Els. Freddie's got 91 yards. Sand wedge. It's not an easy shot. Tough to get these little 90 yard shots close to the hole. Get down. God, get down. <laughs> That's a very obedient way long golf shot. ball, isn't it? Good shot, Freddie. Thanks, Richard. Let's talk about Ernie. He's, uh, he's got a perfect golf swing. He's powerful and he's laid back, kind of like yourself. What do you think of him? Well, I think uh, he's got one of the best games in the world. We all know that. But you hit it right on the nose. He hits it 300, and he has touch like that with a little wedge that he can flip it up there 10 or 12 feet. So 
you know, when they have the whole total package, he's got it. Looks like a carbon copy between Fred Couples and Ernie Els. <laughs> well, you know, he's the kind of player that wins U.S. Opens because he can get it up and down from anywhere. And I think we play a lot alike. And what keeps me from winning the U.S. Open is that I, I really don't have that short game for four rounds. And, you know, you have to be a lot of practice and a lot of ability, but he's got it all. Quite an unusual statement there by Freddie. Well, I'm a little shocked by that statement because I believe Fred does have the touch to be able to go four rounds at the U.S. Open. Birdie for Ernie. Yes. Cuzzy. Cuzzy, Cuzzy. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Very good. A good relief for Ernie to get that putt in there. Because the he does know Fred's going to make this one. He believes it. All right. And he does. Kill. Well done, my man. All right, cousin. A little tap in there from the man. And so, after seven holes, we're still tied, but now at two under par. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf, coming to you from British Columbia and set among some of the most spectacular scenery in North America. And now our two spectacular players are with Richard Zokol on the eighth tee. Great birdies, guys. Freddie, he did it to you, and you put it right on top of him. Yeah, he's uh, not going to miss every 10 or 15 footer. He's hit the ball very well, and uh, you know that's first birdie putt I've had since the five par that was realistically to make, and he topped me. So I feel pretty good about two under, and you know we have a few more birdies left. Great, Ernie. Great putt in there. Way to start it out and to put the pressure on Fred. Uh, you getting used to these greens now? Well, yeah, I'd love to be, uh, love to put on these greens for the rest of my life. I mean, they are just, um, just perfect. I mean, you hit it online, it's going to go in. Um, I missed some from where, from three to five, but uh, I made a good one there, and Freddie topped it up, but he was never going to miss that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got a short par five here. We can, uh, let's see some eagles. All right. The eighth hole, a par five, 530 yards long. Trouble on the, on the eighth hole is strictly on the left side. Ernie's pushed the shot to the right. He doesn't want to be in this position. The prevailing wind is at the player's back on eight. There's no need to hit a driver. Freddie, in fact, has chosen a three wood. He knows that if he hits a good tee shot here, it will go the distance of a driver. And he's pounded this shot. Good shot. Oh, hasn't he? Over the road. <laughs> yeah, it gets over the road. That is a big three foot. <laughs> Ernie Els put his second shot into a greenside bunker. Now here's Freddie with his second. 205 yards for his second shot. Fred's got a five iron. Get up. Get up. Safely on the front of the green. Yeah, Fred would have liked it a little closer, but uh, first things first, it's on the it's on the green. Now Ernie from the bunker. He's got a difficult shot, 30 yards away from the hole, but he is like a true South African, led by Gary Player and all great bunker players from there. He can handle it, and Ernie's not going to be happy with this shot. He would have liked to be a lot closer than that. Uh. So couples now with a putt for an eagle. He's got to navigate the up slope halfway to the to the hole, and then flattens out up top. Well done. Perfect speed. And a birdie for Freddie, and that puts the pressure right smack on Mr. Els. As short as this par five is playing, Ernie wishes this putt for birdie was a lot shorter than this. 15 feet. No, a par for Ernie Els, and for the first time in this match, we have a leader. 
Fred Couples with the birdie takes a one shot lead, three under par to two under par after eight holes of play. Now we go to the ninth hole. A 376 yard par four where the premium is on accuracy off the tee. The players are gonna take it over the bunker. They gotta make sure they're gonna avoid the trees on the right. A strong pin location 29 yards back and eight yards from the right will make this shot challenging. Both players have hit their drives and we'll pick up the action here with Ernie's approach shot. Ernie's got 133 yards, he's got a nine iron. He's blocked out by those trees there so he's gonna have to play to the left. That's really all he could do. Thank you. Now, once again, Freddie has hit a beautiful tee shot in perfect location. Fred's got 114 yards, a pitch edge in his hand. We can, he's going to take it all over this pin. Get down. Oh, what a nice shot. Lining up for another birdie attempt. It looked like it was going. You got it? Really? All right. Ernie, you were uh, quite the tennis player as a young man. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, I still play now and then. I play against Frankie Nobola when we're in, uh, in Lake Nona. Who beats who? Well, he's up on me now. You know, I've lost my touch at the ten okay. on the tennis court. But, uh, I had no idea Frank was that good. Well, he's not. I'm just worse than he is <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> but, I, I, yeah, I, I was a pretty good tennis player growing up, you know. Uh, played a lot of sport at school in South Africa, and tennis was one of my favorite sports. Well, most tennis players play golf for recreation. I guess it's only fitting that Ernie should play tennis for recreation. Ernie's a beautiful putter. He stands over the ball like he's, he's very comfortable. And uh, you don't win two U.S. Opens unless your form and comfort is very solid. <laughs> Lovely stroke. Now, Freddie. So, at the ninth hole, both players take par. And at the end of nine holes, there's the story. Not a bogey on the card. Three birdies for Couples, who's out in 33. Two birdies for Ernie, out in 34. So Fred Couples at the end of nine enjoys a one-shot margin and we'll be back to Nicholas North with more golf in just a moment. Ah, the old seaplane is the necessary and easiest way to sightsee in this part of the world. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf from Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. And what a match we have, Richard. Three under, two under, pretty good. It's tight. These guys have, uh, they want to be a little more aggressive, but they don't want to make the mistake. The greens are a little quick, so it's a little uh, jockeying for position as they make the uh, halfway turn. Okay, we're starting the back nine with a beautiful par three. Let's get back to the action. The tenth hole is a very strong par three. It's designed so that you have, it forces you to shoot at the pin. If you don't shoot at the pin, you're going to end up in trouble. Fred's got 184 yards, and he's taking a five iron. Beauty. Great shot. Get up. Lovely. Great shot right over the pin. Ernie's also selected the five iron. Got a little left. Ten long. Not too far. In the bunker. A little too much club for the powerful Ernie Els. And now it's left him this very difficult shot. As you can see, he's got one foot out of the bunker. What he's going to have to do here is make sure he stays perfectly still with his body so he can enter the sand at the precise point. 
Oh, look at this. What a great shot. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's take another look at it, Richard. Okay, you see, you're gonna notice here that once this ball gets on the green, it's downhill, it's very fast. Look at this ball roll. And right at this point, Ernie knows it's in. A lovely birdie two for Ernie Els. And now the pressure goes on Fred Couples. 12 feet. Straight downhill. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. You're That's kidding. gotta drop. Hold on. Oh. Trembling hey. on the lip. It can't stay there like that. Wow. <laughs> what an expensive shot that was, huh? <laughs> no, Ernie? Red. I can't believe Freddy's butt stayed short. Ernie, South Africans are are notably great bunker players. Great shot. Yeah, but normally a, a guy about five foot six with black hair normally makes that shot. What's his name? Me. Your GP. mentor? GP. <laughs> Your mentor. He's a, a great shot. That's uh, made a big difference in this match to uh, pull a tie with Fred after uh, 10 holes. Yeah, I didn't hit a very good tee shot Yeah, over club maybe. Um, that's a really big bonus. Hopefully it will uh, help me at the end of the day. Well, the GP he referred to, obviously, Gary Player, one of the great sand players of all time. Now they're tied up again off that birdie by Els. At three under par as we move now to the 11th hole. A 555-yard par five. The wind's going to be in their face. They're going to drive it between these bunkers here, and only the big tee shots by Ernie or Fred will allow them to get to the green in two. The hole location is protected by the back right placement. Freddie Couples has already hit his second shot and is just short of the green. And Ernie Els is about to hit his second. Ernie's got driver here. He's going to hit it low and hit it hard and have the ball run all the way to the green. He's got an uphill lie. It'll help him hit the driver in this situation. It looks pretty good. Looks great. Go. Go. There it is, right past Freddie's ball and up onto the green. A beautiful shot. That hole high. Forty-five feet for Ernie's Eagle. Oh, never oh. broke on him, did it? No, it looked like a good putt, but just kept on running through the break. Now, Freddie has hit his third shot to here. He has this for birdie. 15 feet. Freddie would like this putt to drop. Put the pressure back on Ernie. Ooh. Another close one. That's Freddie's dog, and he seems a bit concerned at the moment. Now Ernie Els with a chance to take the lead for the first time today. Four feet. Ernie needs to pour this right in the middle of the hole. <sighs> Another opportunity missed. And so at the end of 11 holes, they're still tied up at three under par. Even when the slopes are barren, the lifts at Whistler are still bustling, and the view from Black Comb Mountain, 6,000 feet up, is definitely worth the trip. Great vistas of the coastal mountain range. Back at Nicholas North, we have come now to the par 3 12th. As you can see, the double green here, the 12th hole, shares this green with the third. The 12th hole is a particularly difficult par 3. The prevailing wind is going to be at the player's base. Once the ball lands on the green, the ball will have a tendency to roll to the back of the green. Ernie's got 200 yards. He's chosen a five iron. Mm. 
And long. He hasn't judged the wind properly there. That's definitely too much club. Now, Freddie. Well, the advantage of watching Ernie hit that shot, he's chosen a six iron. He's learned from, from Ernie's mistake. Hit the slope. He doesn't Hit want the, the ball slope. to release to the back of the green. Okay. Thanks. It's a good, solid shot for Fred. And even the railway can't upset the focus of Freddie Couples. Like many golf courses in Scotland, the railroad goes right by the golf course. Ernie's faced with a difficult bunker shot once again. Get in. Oh, I thought he was going to do it again. Ernie thought he was going to do it again, too. Now, Freddie. 30 feet away, speed putt. Distance is important. He's had the speed all day, hasn't he? It's a good putt. Now, Ernie, to save the par. Beautiful. Yeah. Great Thank save, you. Ernie. Thank you. And so, after 12 holes, they're still knotted up. It's been a close match all the way. And now we go to the 13th hole. A 564-yard par 5, a relatively easy par 5. It's the second one on the back nine. The prevailing wind is downwind, so these players will be able to hit it in two. If accuracy off the tee is vitally important, it will set up a relatively easy second shot to a very simple pin placement on the middle of the green. Ernie Ells first. With a driver. Wow. Yes, he's lost that to the right. Look out. Oh, and that kicks into the woods. A dreadfully dark place for Ernie Ells. Well, Jack, a lot of people might think that ball could be out of bounds or lost, but it is definitely a hazard. It's marked by red stakes. Now, here is a definite advantage for Fred. He can put this tee shot down the middle of the fairway. He will have a big advantage. With a driver. Yeah. That's going right a little bit, too. But it's up past the trouble. And as you can see, the rough is not that deep. He shouldn't have a too bad a lie at all. Not like Ernie Els, who has a very bad lie. In fact, it's deep, deep in the hazard. And from there, he lifted it and took a penalty stroke under the eye of Will Nicholson, our rules man and referee of this match. Okay. Ernie dropped the ball. And all he can do here is just get it back out to the fairway, get it back in play, uh, take the punishment on the chin and minimize the damage. Oh, that's his third shot. Out into the fairway. Well, it deserves to go in the hazard. Significant advantage for Fred Couples. Three wood, 263 yards. <laughs> Cut. 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 Oh, what a magnificent shot. That's going to catch the swell, isn't it? No? Huh? Well, this is putting a lot of pressure on Ernie right oh, now. Oh, my, yes. He is there in two, and this is Ernie's fourth shot. 244 yards. A two iron. Wow. What a great shot. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, what a great Put shot up. by Ernie Els. Wow. Great shot. Thank you. I had my drive in the first time. First place. 
<laughs> Did you see that shot he just had? No. Could walk out of here with a half, Joey. I roll is five feet by. <laughs> the old Mongolian reversal, the guy just hits a two iron three fight. What Freddie's were talking about there is he doesn't, he believes he should walk away with a couple of strokes on this hole. And, he, and Ernie played such a great shot, he doesn't want to walk away with a half. Oh. For Eagle. Oh. Oh. That pleased Freddie, I think. And another birdie for him. That puts him at four under, and now Ernie Ells for a remarkable par if he makes it. Now Ernie's got this putt to save one stroke. Yes, he does. A par for Ernie Ells, birdie for Fred Couples. And at the end of 13, Freddie once again takes a one-shot lead. Another one of the recreational activities in Whistler. This is called wakeboarding. And it's right on the lake that adjoins the Nicholas North Golf Course. And now on the 14th tee with the players, here's Richard. Ernie, the 13th par five wasn't the tee shot you wanted. I know that, but man, oh man, what a par. Yeah, thanks. After that tee shot, I was staring bogey or anything worse than that in the in the face. But you know, I got it out there, hit two iron, hit a good shot, made a good swing on that, and got lucky with the shot. You know, it ended up what five, six feet and held it for for a par. So you know, as I say, I was just happy to be able to make five and get out of there. Yeah, Fred, only a one-stroke advantage on that hole. Uh, it was looking like you were going to be uh, possibly two. What do you think about that par? That's you know the the big man from. Uh, Anywhere can hit any shot at any time. That's what I love about his game. Um, you know, I I, I, ex, I expect him to hit it on the green, uh, but I really thought you know if I made four, I'd probably pick up two shots. And and as we know, he's a great long iron player. I wasn't surprised, but uh, it was some shot. And now let's take a look at the 14 hole, a par four, a straightforward par four at 432 yards. The players will probably hit three wood off the tee and have a short iron to the green. The hole location is back left. Both players have hit their tee shots and the first to hit their approach will be Ernie Hells. 156 yards, Ernie has a nine iron. mentioned that he came over the top on that shot. Freddie's got 146 yards, uh, an awkward lie. Possibly a little bit of a flyer, Jack. Oh. <laughs> and just about on the edge, a long way from the hole. From there, both players got down in two for pars. And at the end of 14 holes, Fred Couples enjoys a one-shot lead still over Ernie Ells. That brings us to the par four 15th hole. A 437-yard par four. It's a very demanding hole. With the back right pin placement, it's important to make sure you get your tee shot on the fairway. Where Fred's going to be doing is placing his drive between those bunkers with a driver. Beautiful shot. And that's perfect position for Freddie for his approach shot in here. Both players now have taken off a layer of clothing. Now Ernie. Now Ernie hasn't driven the ball particularly well today. It's vital that he hit, makes a good swing and drives this ball into the fairway. Beautiful shot. Thanks. Yippee. So wee. And in perfect position, too. Uh, 
Ernie's got 156 yards. He's chosen an eight iron. We're coming down the last few holes. He's got to make something happen. Go. Go on. Mm -hmm. He had that shot all over the pin. Just another yard short, and that ball would have skipped up top and been very close. There's room behind it, isn't there? Yeah, there's eight behind it. 48 to the hole. Freddie's talking to Joe LaCava. He's got 148 yards. Freddie also asked him there's a lot of room behind the hole, so that means he can be aggressive with the shot. He can go right at the pin. Get up. And he did get up. That's a good shot. That's a great shot. Now Ernie for birdie. He's got 20 feet. He's got to come up that hill. And then it'll flatten out as it gets to the hole. It's not a putt that you would expect to make. Pull it. <laughs> Pull it out of the bed. And they agree with him. He did pull it. Now here's a putt you'd expect to make. Fred's got 12 feet for birdie. Oh. <laughs> Looked like he had it right in the middle of the hole. Well, neither one are able to convert, and at the end of 15 holes, Freddie Couples at four under has a one-shot lead over Ernie Els. Whistler was originally named Alta Lake, named after this body of water where in the summertime, the water warms up and becomes ideal for swimming. We're back at Nicholas North on the 16th tee. Freddie's got a three wood in his hand on this par four, 425 yards long. He's playing for position. Hitting that fairway is so important. Good looking shot down the middle of the fairway. Boy, he's had that stick going all day for him, hasn't he? As you can see, he chose the three wood. He doesn't want to get into the hazard that uh, a driver would put him. 16th tee right near this splendid clubhouse at Whistler, Nicholas North. Ernie's chosen a three wood as well. Yeah. And the same results as Freddie. Two good shots. Okay. Side by side. There's the shot they'll have. Ernie's got 147 yards. He's taken a nine iron. The situation is getting pretty tense for him. He's going to have to force the issue. Come down. That's a good shot. Oh, fine shot. Fred's got 140 yards. He's got a pitching wedge in his hand. He knows this is the last easy shot he's going to have in the last three holes. He wants this shot close. Beautiful. Oh, what a shot. Now the pressure really on Ernie Els. He needs this putt. Ernie's got 12 feet. He knows in his mind right now that he needs this putt in this situation. Turn, turn, didn't. Mm. <sighs> All right. He did not want to leave Fred with this situation, which is six feet for birdie. Fred Couples at five under par. Yank it right in there. And Ernie has a little tricky putt here for par. As they say, there's, uh, there's still a little chicken left on that bone. <laughs> 
Great putt. Yeah, he makes it here, but Freddie improves his position. With two holes left to play, he has a two-shot lead. The notorious 17th hole is the signature hole of Nicholas North. It's 221 yards long. Freddie's got a five iron. Yeah. All you can say is wow. I don't know where it is, but I pulled it online. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ernie must believe he has to hold this tee shot, doesn't he? Absolutely, Jack. He's got to take dead aim at the hole. He's got a four iron. Catch the slope, right. baby. Uh. Good shot. He's played the smart shot. Great shot in there, Fred. <laughs> I don't know where did, it did is, you, Richard. Did you pull it? I pulled it. Uh, hit a nice soft draw. I mean, I couldn't have dialed it any better, but I was not aiming that far left. Well, it's the exact shot you were looking for on this hole, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, you know, being first up, I, I wanted to hit the green. I didn't really know what club, and I figured it was a good five that would put me on there. And, you know, that's, I don't want to say it's luck, but to hit it that close from there is more luck than skill. I mean, I hit a good shot, but it caught the slope and it's in good shape. Knock it in. <laughs> Wonderful shot. Kazi. That's what I should have done. Yeah. Like you. <laughs> uh. you should have gone to the middle. I could have gone for the flag. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Freddie should have gone for the middle of the green where Ernie is, and Ernie should have hit the shot that Freddie did. But here's Ernie for birdie. 25 feet. Nice par, but it's not good enough. Couples now to go six under par. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> and with one hole to play, Fred Couples has Thanks. taken a three shot lead over Ernie Els. Magnificent shot struck here at the 17th, the par three. Seems to have assured Freddie his fourth Shell's Wonderful World of Golf trophy. We're here at the 18th at Nicholas North. It's a par four, 438 yards long. Ernie Ells found the hazard with his drive, took a drop, and this will be his third shot. Ernie's got 201 yards. As you can see, he's got an uphill and side hill lie. With a three iron, a very difficult shot. Yeah. He's hit a wonderful shot here. Beautiful. But he's there in three. Fred Couples, in the meantime, had put his second shot here, just above and to the left of the green, and not a very good lie. Not a good lie at all. This is, it's a bird's nest in there, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> wow, he can do it, can he? Beautiful shot. Yeah. Wow. I didn't want to hit it in this bush. You know what I mean? Oh, well, with a three shot lead, Freddie got safely on the green in three. This is Ernie now for par. Good looking putt. Putt. Uh -huh. And he'll finish with a bogey for a two under total, right. 69. Right well, the two time U.S. Open champion didn't win today, but he did play well. Yes, he gave us a great show, some great shot making. Now, Freddie for par. For six under. Oh. 
So a bogey for Fred Couples here at 18, and he finishes yeah. at five under par, 66. Yeah. And the winning continues for Fred Couples in Shell's wonderful world of golf. Front nine scorecard, we've mentioned before, not a bogey by either player. 33 for Freddie, 34 for Els. The back nine, Freddie had another 33, this time with three birdies and a bogey. And Ernie Els was at 35 with one birdie and one bogey. Both players shot excellent scores. Ernie Els, 69, and Fred Couples with 66. Fred, definitely now king of the hill in this new series of Shell's Wonderful World of Golf. Dominating with shots like this at Paso de Campo in the Dominican Republic. With sterling two irons like this in the teeth of a gale at Skibo Castle in Scotland. Displaying the artistry of his short game at Mount Juliet in Ireland. Someone this way. And striking this lovely tee shot at the 17th at Nicholas North in Whistler, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And along the way, he defeated Raymond Floyd, Greg Norman, Tom Watson, and Ernie Els to be truly the dominant player on Shell's wonderful world of golf.